Comparator has been in the game for absolutely ages now, and I have to say it is one of those redstone components that is a tiny bit more on the confusing side. It's not quite as straightforward as say something like redstone duster or redstone torch. There's a few fiddly bits and pieces, there's different modes and different things that you can do with it, and that means that quite a few people are still fairly confused by this thing. I get tons of comments down in my comment section asking me, what on earth is this thing? What on earth does it do? How on earth do I use this thing effectively? So what I'm going to do is a full video dedicated to explaining everything you need to know about the comparator so that you can make use of it in your own redstone circuits. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will be a comparator pro, or at least fingers crossed. So let's get things started with the very basics. This is the comparator. This is what it looks like. As you can see, we've got these two prongs standing up like this. Then we've got an arrow facing in this direction. And then we've got this little nib at the end right here, which is actually a toggleable thing. And I'll talk about that a little bit later on. Now this right here is the output, and this right here is the main input. And as you can see, if we flick this lever, we get ourselves a continual pulse just going right the way through. But it also has two secondary inputs. It's got one input on this side and one input on this side. Now the sole purpose of the comparator is to compare these inputs right here. So what it will do is it will compare this input to these inputs and give an output depending on certain conditions. And I'll talk about those a little bit later on in the video. Another really cool thing that comparators can do is they can take redstone signal strength from containers. So right now we've got ourselves a chest that there are absolutely no items on the inside of this chest, which means that the comparator is not giving off any redstone signal strength. However, if we say, for example, place one item on the inside of the chest there, the comparator has detected it, and now we have a signal strength of one. Now if you place maybe two stacks on the inside of the comparator, you can see we've got ourselves a signal strength of two. So basically, the more items you have on the inside of the container, the stronger the redstone signal strength being outputted through the comparator will be. So if we add a few more stacks here, you can see we get a few more bits of redstone. And if we just fill this thing in, you can see we get a very strong redstone signal strength. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, the comparator has got this little nib up at the front here, which we can toggle on and off. Now this toggles between normal mode and subtract mode. So first things first, let's take a look at normal mode. I'm going to run a signal strength into the back of this comparator, just like this. And as you can see, we got ourselves a redstone output. But then I'm going to run some redstone into the side of this one, and I'm going to flick this on, and then flick this one on. And as you can see, we don't get any redstone output. Now that is because the signal strength running into the side of the comparator is actually stronger than the signal strength running into the back. There are two blocks between the lever and the comparator, and on this side there is only one block between the lever and the comparator, which means that this redstone signal strength is stronger, which means it's actually cutting off the redstone running into the back, which means that we don't get an output through the comparator. However, if the signal strengths are equal, then we will get ourselves a redstone output, and if the signal strength running into the side of our comparator over on this side is less than the signal strength running into the back of it, then we will still get an output. Now, I understand that that may have seemed just a tiny bit confusing, but essentially the comparator is comparing this redstone signal strength to this redstone signal strength, and if this redstone signal strength is stronger than that redstone signal strength, then it doesn't give an output. However, if this redstone signal strength is weaker than that redstone signal strength, then the comparator will get an output. Now there are a lot of words in there, so you might have to rewind and watch back through until you get it straight in your head. And of course, I would suggest experimenting with this. But now let's move on to the subtract mode. Now I would say I've probably got a little bit of explaining to do right here because we've got redstone all over the place. We've got signs pretty much everywhere and a whole ton of levers. So first things first, we're going to take a look at the output line. As you can see, we've got a line running out of the comparator. And next to it, we've got a bunch of signs counting up. Now this actually corresponds to the signal strength being outputted by the comparator. So say for example, our comparator was giving off a signal strength of say eight, the redstone would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's where it would stop, and that is next to the eighth side. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Now the inputs, they're a tiny bit more confusing because the signs next to the levers correspond to the signal strength you're actually going to be giving to the comparator. So say we flick this lever right here, that means that we start at 15. This right here has got a signal strength of 15, and then it would go 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. 
eight would be going into the comparator. And because comparators always output the same signal strength that has gone into the back of them, we would also get a signal strength of eight running out of the back of it. So that sort of makes sense. Now, the one off to the side works in a pretty similar fashion. So say, for example, you wanted to give a signal strength of eight into the side of the comparator. We would flick this lever right here. And then once again, it would be 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, running into the side of that thing, which means that we can do the subtract mode now. So let's just do one or two more examples just to make sure that it's all straight in your head. So we're running a signal strength of 12 into the back of the comparator, and then we're going to run a signal strength of seven into the side of the comparator. And once again, we should get an output of five, that's all good. But if we change out that seven for say a 10, then we should get a signal strength of two because 12 minus 10 is two. So subtract mode subtracts this side from that side. So you run the input into that one, and then the comparator will subtract the input coming into the side, and it will give a signal strength that corresponds to that calculation. I hope all of that makes sense. I understand that it's a tiny bit more wordy than you would normally expect, and these things are a little bit difficult to understand, but once again, I would highly suggest playing this with yourselves. So let's just quickly do another few demonstrations. So say for example, we run in a signal strength of 13 into the back of the comparator, and then we run in a signal strength of eight into the side of it. We should get an output of five once again, but if we change out that eight for say a 10, then we should get a signal strength of three being outputted because 13 minus 10 equals three. So basically what the comparator is doing is it is subtracting the input value from the input value on that side right here. Hopefully that all makes sense. This is really, really wordy and it's quite difficult to understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a world download down in the description. You guys can play with this one for yourselves. And once again, I would highly suggest experimenting with all of this stuff throughout the video. But as I mentioned earlier on in the video, the comparator doesn't just compare and subtract things. It can also draw signal strengths from different items and containers. So behind me, we have got every single item that the comparator can draw a signal strength from. First off, we've got the furnace, then we've got the brewing stand, the hopper, the hopper mine cart on top of a detector rail, then we've got a dispenser, dropper, a chest, a trap chest, the chest mine cart on top of the detector rail once again, then we have the strange ones, which are the cake, the cauldron, which is definitely one of the most useful things because cauldrons are movable objects, so that's basically a movable power block. Then we've got the command block, the end portal frame, we've got the item frame, the jukebox, and as of Minecraft 1.11, we also have the shulker box. Before we get on with the redstone circuits, I've got three pieces of comparator-related trivial information that you guys might find useful. So number one is that comparators have a tick speed of two game ticks or one redstone tick. So if you flick this lever right here, you can see they have exactly the same delay as a redstone repeater. Number two is that they can draw redstone outputs through blocks. So right here, we've got ourselves a chest with one item on the inside, and that comparator is being powered by that chest and it's giving off a signal strength of one. Now the way that I actually worked out the signal strength is by using a mathematical equation. It's a tiny bit complicated, so I'll put it down in the description. But essentially, it does the sum of all slots fullness divided by the number of slots in the container, and then it times that number by 14, and then you add one, and then you truncate the answer. Now the way that you work out the fullness of a slot is by doing the number of items in a slot divided by the max sack size for this type of item. Thank you ever so much to Wikipedia for that one because that's actually a really cool fact. Now it is time to take a look at some simple circuits that make use of the comparator's functionality. I'm going to try my best to explain to you how all of them work. So number one is this redstone clock right here. Now this may look really, very strange. We just have redstone running back around it into the side of the comparator, but this actually works thanks to the subtract mode, which I explained earlier on. So right now we're running a signal strength of 15 into the back of the comparator. That signal strength is then being outputted through into here. So we have 15, 14, 13, which means that the 13 is then being subtracted from the 15, giving a signal strength of two, which means it goes one, two, which turns off all of the redstone. But that means that there's nothing subtracting from the 15 going in, which means that we get 15 as the output again, which means that then one tick later, it subtracts the 13, which means we get two, and so on and so forth, which means we get this flashing redstone clock, which I use in a ton of my redstone builds. Now, I know what you're thinking. This looks like another redstone clock, but actually, this is a fully functional pulse extender. We hit the button, the button is now turned off, but the redstone is still being powered thanks to the way that comparators work. As I mentioned earlier on, comparators will always give an output that is identical in redstone signal strength to the input. So say for example, we run in a signal strength of eight into the back of this comparator right here, it will give out a signal strength of eight. 
And what this means is, is when we hit this button, everything powers, and then gradually the redstone powers down because it starts off at 15, so we get a signal strength of 15 going in here, then we give an output of 15, then this one will be 14. So then this gives an output of 14, which means we get an output of 14 here, and then it goes 13, 13, 13, 12, 12, 12, 11, 11, 11, 10, 10, 10, 9, 9, 9, so on and so forth until we reach zero, and that's when the pulse actually shuts off. And finally, onto one of my favorite redstone circuits. This is the automated dropper circuit. When we place in a bunch of items here, you can see that the redstone clock will kick into action and all of the items will be fired out until there are no items on the inside of the dropper and then it will stop kicking out the items, which means that it saves on a little bit of lag and also that annoying ticking noise that happens on an empty dispenser. That's always awful. Now, the way that this one works is we've got a comparator taking output from our dropper right here. And obviously I was mentioning that earlier on in the video. That redstone output then goes into this redstone dot, which powers this block right here, which powers this repeater, which runs a redstone input into the side of the comparator. Now the redstone output from this repeater is stronger than the output coming from the dropper, which means that it shuts off this comparator, which shuts off everything, which means that then of course the redstone signal strength from the dropper is stronger than that of the redstone here because there's no input running into the side of this comparator, which means that all of the redstone kicks back into action. And we get ourselves a working redstone clock then this redstone up at the top here just powers this block, which bud powers this dropper, which means that this dropper starts chucking out its items. And of course, when all of the items are gone, there is no output going through this comparator, which means that the redstone clock turns off. That was a very wordy explanation, but I hope you just about got there. So we go guys, I hope you've enjoyed this very in-depth video on the comparator that you can see just behind my left shoulder right there. I personally really enjoyed creating this one. Even if it was a tiny bit technical and perhaps a tiny bit wordy at times, hopefully you managed to get there in the end and hopefully you now understand everything there is to know about the comparator. Now if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to hit that like button and if you really loved it then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching guys, this has been Mumbo and I'm out. I'll see you later.